deep down. Silence by rising waters. You seem sad, stranger. I heard you mention a flood? Yes. A sudden deluge, without rain or melt to explain it. I'm Lalai, the drummer of Deep Din. Or at least I was, until it disappeared under the waters. Deep Din? What's that? A hollow, carved out by the old ones. A chamber, a basin, and a musical instrument all at once. My life, my calling. I'd explain it by playing for you if I could. But its pipes are deep under the water now. So Deep Din is a place and a musical instrument? Yes. Pipes that carry a perfect tone beneath a sonorous basin. A wondrous edifice the old ones used to carry music far and wide. During the war, my father played the pipes to rally the Banuk against the Karja. I'm the drummer now. But our battles are few and far between. Mostly I play for the joy of it. Or to remember my family. Of course, if the waters don't recede, what's the point of joy? Or remembering. So the waters came fast. One day it was dry. The next, the nearby river had risen and the entire basin was flooded. I don't understand it. There was no rain, not even any clouds, and yet the river rose higher than I'd ever seen it. And there it remains. A flood without rain. That is strange. Where is this place? I'll have a look if I'm in the area. Just northwest of here. Look all you like, but I don't see what good it'll do. The floodwaters aren't going anywhere. How does one ask a river to relent? Pick up a handful of snow and hold it in your fist. It'll melt away. No more blood song. Beware the machines on purple markings. To approach them. Without caution is to lay wood on the whole fire. It feels like it's been forever since the cool. Again. Doubt is heavier than a week's snow. Forgive me, my chieftain. We will be ready for the next attempt. But this will not be an attempt. It must be done. Do you understand? My chieftain. Good. Outlander, I suppose you wish to speak. There are other Werax in Song's Edge, too? Yes. The village has its own life for all Banuk who need trade or shelter. After the war ended, it sprang up from what was once a campsite, quick as the bloom between frosts. Perhaps it will last until the Karja seek war again. Orea knows about this, Damon. Where would I talk to her? She does a shaman's work. That is not for the eyes and ears of others. Certainly. Not an Outlander's. This Damon you talked about. If you are hardy enough, you can venture out and see the signs yourself. It has changed the machines, made them fiercer, stronger. But what is it? A matter for the shamans to debate. Did your Warwick come from this place? No, he rallied most of our hunters from across Banyur to face the threat of the demon. But I was born here, 
and stayed to fight the Karja when others retreated into the mountains. A few of my old warriors remain with me, those who survived. You're set on going back to the mountain? I put my word to it. Even with the risks being so great? The risk of what? Death? It would be a worse fate to bow our heads to the challenge and say too much. Well, I guess that's it then. Good. I prefer deeds to words. Right. No words of it. When the old ones were fresh in their graves and our numbers were still small, it was she who led us through the frozen wastes. We also remember the ravenous tribe who delighted in sucking the marrow from our broken bones. Everywhere Banukai and her Warak fled, the ravenous tribe were never far behind. Seeking a way to defeat them, Banukai went into the wastes and let the wind whip her cheeks. And when the cold brought sleep, she dreamt of light. She saw it behind the world, a great calming sheet of icy blue. And she saw something new. Herds of machines, each filled with the same blue light. When she woke, she knew which star to follow. She walked for many days and nights until she arrived at a temple built from sparkling ice. At the gates of the temple, she was met by the machines from her dream, who bowed to her as she entered. Inside, Banukai discovered the blue light bubbling from a hole in the snowy earth like a spring. You bid me come, she said. My people need aid. Will you provide it? The machines whispered to Banakai. We go where the light goes. For we are its chosen vessels. There is darkness in your heart. It cannot hold the light for long. Carry it to your people if you must. But the cost will be great. Banukai waded into the pool. The light reared like a nest of snakes and struck Banukai, piercing her skin, filling her up. Banukai did not scream, though she was in agony. Banukai did not collapse, though her limbs shook. She climbed from the pool and carried the light inside her. She marched toward home and the machines marched behind her. As she walked, the light struggled to push its way out of her, but the machines were there to aid her. She sewed her body shut with their cables, patched herself with their metal, and kept the light within. When she arrived, the forces of the ravenous tribe had surrounded the camp. Although the light had left her with a thousand wounds, Banukai charged. And because she held the light, the machines followed. The ravenous tribe killed many, but those in camp rushed to join the battle. They gathered pieces of the fallen machines and from them fashioned weapons. And it was with these that Banakai's people repaid Some the suffering the ravenous tribe had brought upon them. You went quiet, descended. Banakai The machines bowed their heads.
Okay, if I want to learn more about how this demon affects the machines, I've got to find Maria. To do that, I need to talk to her apprentice, who followed the river north. Outlander, wait, wait a moment. That weapon of yours, Outlander, that spear, I can see the blue light upon it. This? It was made by an acquaintance of mine. Ah, a shaman. Uh, no. More of a tinker? A tinker does not understand the spark in the metal, the song in the metal like this. But it could be improved upon, modified with the help of the old ones. Far north of here, there is a cave, a, a shaft in the snow. Within it is a nest of metal birds. Find a bird that hasn't been stripped by shaman's past. Look for a rail inside it, the length of your spear. That's all I can tell you. Get a rail from some metal birds in a cave. Sounds perfectly normal. isn't roaming far from the camp. Keep them together this time. Then you wait. But I wait. meat. said Araya's apprentice went north of the river. Hopefully not too far. <laughs> that must be an Altuk, looking out at that. Naltuk? Who are you? How did you find me? Burgrind told me you'd be out here. He's persistent. I've told that Asaram a thousand times. I don't need to buy anything. And I'm not selling. I just need to find Araya. Well, you won't. She's gone where only shamans can tread. She seeks guidance from the voice in the blue light. That is her task. And the task she gave me is to observe the daemon's work. To stop it spreading, if I can. But what can I do about these towers? In only a few weeks, they've sprouted throughout the cut. Damon's energy pulses from them. Rallies the machines, even repairs them. Aratok said this Damon was frenzying machines. Look there. Those with the purple markings. They belong to the Damon. They're stronger, more dangerous. I've seen something like this before. A corruption. But it wasn't from your daemon. You have? Well, then you know more than I do. Are these towers, were they part of your corruption? No. Those are new to me, too. Like I said, they empower the daemon's machines. They must be stopped. Will you tell me where Aurea went? You ask a lot of questions. Only when I'm not getting the answers I need. There's but one voice Aurea wants to hear right now, and it isn't yours. I'm sorry. All right. You want to stop the spread of the Daemon's work? I know how to get started. With my bow and spear. Outlander, wait. 
Won't you tell me your name? Aloy. Good. If you fall to the Daemon's machines, at least I can pr properly recount your efforts to erect. Thanks for the vote of confidence. But I won't fall. And when I'm done, you're gonna tell me where she is. Gives them energy, repairs them. Be good for an old remedy.
Seems I can take care of the machines and towers. The daemon's next. You claimed its power for yourself somehow. Perhaps Aurea should meet you after all. What she truly seeks is hope. After what I just saw, you could show her that. She's in retreat beyond those mountains, the ice rasps. You'll have to walk the shaman's path to get there. You'll know you've reached the end when you come to a shrine, a great machine covered in blue gleam. Shamans who complete the path take a piece of it as reward. If you make it that far, you should too. You'll have earned it. You said something about blue gleam at the end of the shaman's path? A crystal that builds on the bodies of machines in the oldest ice. We Banuk believe it's the stuff of the blue light, frozen as it escapes their shells. You might be more interested that merchants will trade well for it. Bergen told me you're Aurea's apprentice. In her absence, I served the chieftain and his Werak as an advisor, a scout, a speaker for the blue light. A lot of responsibilities. I don't know if I can live up to Aurea's example, but I have to try. I owe her that much. She took a chance on me, an aspiring shaman from the edge of the world. No one else would. Were you with Aurea when they attacked the mountain? I wish I had been. Even with all that happened. I'm no warrior, though. So she bid me wait. When Rhea and the chieftain returned, I saw them argue bitterly. I don't know what about exactly. Then she came to me, gave me my task, and left us. How do I cross this shaman's path? Go to the ice rasps. Then follow the markers through the ice caves and the waterfalls, and make the climb to the shrine. But be careful. The path is meant to be an ordeal, the final trial of a young shaman's training. And I'll find Araya at the end of it? No. She goes further up, somewhere inside the mountain. If you see her, would you tell her? I have faith she will hear the voice again. All right, I guess I'm off to the ice rasps to find this shaman's path.